The team behind Netflix's smash hit The Tinder Swindler is out today with a new series already generating quite a bit of buzz. Absolutely. It's called The Most Hated Man on the Internet. The series details the rise and fall of Hunter Moore, who calls himself the king of revenge porn. Take a look. Hunter Moore, also known as the most hated man on the internet. And his website is anyone up. Me and my friends would just post a bunch of girls' hands. I was like, yo, I can make money out of people over it. He thought of himself as the king of revenge porn. He made it appear that you would be very successful by being a complete sociopath on the internet. And it pissed me off. I pleaded with him to please remove these images. And the response that I got, LOL. Oh. Back in 2010, Moore launched a website called Is Anyone Up? There, people could anonymously post nude photos of their former partners, usually without their consent. The docuseries tells the story of Moore's victims and one mother's relentless effort to take him down. Vicki Miller is a producer for the series, and James McGibney, the man credited with taking down that site, and also the founder of Bullyville.com. They both join us now. Thank you for being with us. Vicki, I do want to start with you. You worked so closely with a number of these victims who were featured in the series, and I want to ask you about really how your team navigated these different difficult, painful conversations that often bring people the sense of shame, even when they do not ever deserve it. I mean, how did they work to sort of tell these stories without re-traumatizing or re-shaming the victims in the process? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a huge responsibility asking people to relive what's often the worst moments of their lives. But it's important to take people back to that moment so that the viewers can see how awful it was and how badly they were affected by it, even 10 years on. We just took great care to make sure it was handled very thoughtfully and we thought through all the consequences. We supported them emotionally, psychologically. We had them work with a psychologist to make sure they were able to share their stories. We made sure that we were always available for them, that there was no surprises around the corner. They were included in the process. And, you know, I think it's important to say that everyone that's in the series wanted to be there. They actively chose to take part. They wanted to be heard and they wanted their story to be out there to help others. And I think for some, it was even a, a relatively cathartic process mm -hmm. because they knew they were finally being heard and hadn't been yeah. heard for so long. Yeah. You know, in one clip, Vicky, from the series, there's a kindergarten teacher who's walked out of her classroom the day after photos of her were posted to that site. Often, these were photos that the women took privately. Their accounts were hacked. Obviously, their lives upended. You keep in touch with some of these women. How, how are they doing now? Do you know what? Most of them are doing great. I mean, it has affected their lives. You know, it, it changes the course of your life, doesn't it? And, and you know, it, it, take, it takes you in a direction you didn't want to go in. But particularly the women that we work with, they're incredibly strong, amazing characters. And they've managed to, you know, steer back onto the path that they wanted. Sometimes it's changed people for the better. Mm -hmm. um, Cara was going to be a nurse. And after this experience, she changed to being a social worker and has done a great deal of good as a social worker, given what she'd been through. So it's, you know, they're, they're strong women. They're not letting it define them, thankfully. Here. James, I do want to bring you in here. I mean, you're the person who ultimately put a stop to the Is Anyone Up website. I mean, in the series, you say sometimes you have to be a bully to beat a bully. I mean, you got to sort of fight fire with fire. So talk to us about that takedown. I mean, what personal experiences sort of drove you to take that action? And, and what was the actual process like? And, and sort of how did you justify that? I mean, explain to us the sentiment behind that. You know, you got to be a bully to take a bully down sometimes. Yeah, and that's truly how I feel. And Hunter's probably the biggest bully that was ever on the internet, at least back in the, that time frame. And I was just disgusted by him and what he was doing and how he was bullying these women. And uh, I come from the foster care system and I was abused and I, I've seen lots of foster uh, sisters who were abused and Hunter was abusing these women in the same sort of way, just online. Um, and it just struck a personal chord with me. So. I knew the second I saw his first interview, his first TV interview, uh, Hunter became the hunted, mm. and my goal was just to take him down and keep him down. James, I do want to ask a follow-up there. I mean, I love what you said about, you know, being part of the foster care system and, and so many kids who kind of experience this sense of abuse at times. Was there any thread you noticed, I mean, among the women and, and the people that you featured here, sort of that helped them overcome this? Was there a common thread or sentiment or feeling they expressed that sort of helped them see and ultimately get to the other side? You know, it's an interesting question because I always say women are smarter than men and they're most certainly stronger. I definitely could never have a baby, for example. But, uh, you know, these women, I, I would interact with them and 
and they were strong. And, and I think that they knew that there was light at the end of the tunnel. The ones that I was speaking with privately, I guaranteed them that I was going to do whatever it took to get the site mm -hmm. down. But um, they were just so strong and, and so persevering. And uh, you have to admire them, all of them, every one of them that's in the docuseries. Good on you for being an ally. I think that's what real allyship looks like as well. James Hunter Moore pleaded guilty to and went to prison for some of these crimes, identity theft, computer hacking. I understand he initially agreed to speak in this series, but then it didn't happen. Has he ever expressed remorse for the site that he put up, the actions, or for threatening you and your own family? Uh, never uh, for threatening my, my wife or children. He showed a little bit of remorse the day the site was taken down, but I think that was just a, a, a song and dance for his followers more than anything else, but that type of person is never going to be remorseful. And even if in today or tomorrow, if he is interviewed by anybody, uh, if he shows any uh, remorse or contrition, uh, rest assured he's lying. Wow. Vicki Miller, James McGivney, this was such a hard topic. I mean, there were just parts in the in the trailer even and the clips that we saw that, that just, I mean, it makes your heart go out for these people because it's just, it's, it's unimaginable. And again, no one deserves that level of invasion of their privacy or shame. So thank you for bringing it to light because that light serves as a disinfectant. So we appreciate your time. Um, and God bless the moms too. The mom who did this investigation spent two years of her oh. life, broke down in tears. And yes, Give tears me chills. to the women I mean, too, who speak out, who spoke incredible. out for this. Y'all did that. Good thank job. You. Good job. Thank you. Can't wait to see the whole thing. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.